Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So I'm back working on Bunny. Now this little guy started at Easter and I think there's two videos where I just started placing backgrounds and got my little bunny into position. He's all stitched down and looking gorgeous. Um, what have I done as well? Oh, I did a little bit of um, camphor stitch here. I did a little bit of stitching around there. And then I thought I might as well come back to you guys and um, do a little bit more playing on it. Now the, the big picture, I finally got my head around where I'm heading with this. Um, I started this uh, at Easter, pre Ballarat and all of that. And then while I was in Ballarat with um, Susanna, I picked up this book and it just cemented the idea of where I want to head with it. And in particular, I want it to feel like old quilt, an old quilting piece. And this page just spoke to me. These big, loose flowers with some leaves and some stitching in them. Ah, absolutely just beautiful. So with that in mind, I've already done a flip through of this book, but it is just oh, gorgeous. I picked up the second one, had lots of bags in it. Um, but I just... I love this because this piece is all about um, needle turn applique. So all of my pieces, see I'm usually just put it down and stitch it, but I thought this time I'm going to take the time and needle turn it and sort of help it get more of a, a quilted feel like it's been patched together, but not the whole piece because I still want to see my background. So Bunny has been all turned and um, place down and now it's time to you know embellish and this is my inspiration so now what I also want to do is we'll come back down here is I found up the top oh actually before I do so remember this pocket this was a piece on a piece of French um, uh, cloth oh just gone blank um, hemp piece of hemp was this piece of linen stitched on there for some reason so I've turned it down attached it and now that's going to be my pocket of flowers hence the inspiration for the flowers and I've got plenty of space up here to have the stems coming out and some flowers building but what I do want to do before I even get to flowers which won't be today's video it'll be in the future, is I've got this. This is a very old little doily crocheted with two cherubs and a bunch of fruit. And I just love it. I can't recall, I, I'm pretty sure I didn't find it in France. I have a feeling I bought it from Lisa Maddock who gets treasures from France, I think, at the retreat but I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, it doesn't matter. And I thought, because I want to have a bit of a Wes Calico and Stitch, this is also part of my inspiration, is piecing together, is it this one or is it Once We're Old? So I had this book sitting with the pile for this project. I think that's where I got yeah, this. See how it's got that quilted look on all of the fabric elements and then this flower thing and the vase thing and then I think there was a rabbit somewhere I saw a second ago. That's sort of how this idea has sort of come together and it was Easter. So I was thumbing through this one. I can't see there was a, a bunny somewhere. I saw a second ago there. See the bunny? And then I purchased this pattern and instead of making him a 3D toy, I gave it more of a flat look. So that gave me an interesting, primitive looking rabbit. So it's just like trying to use all of these books I buy, trying to learn new techniques and sort of send me in different directions. Um, I think inspiration everywhere. 
Now, this one, I'm not sure why I had this one out. It must have been something that caught my eye and sent me down this rabbit hole. I think it's just the fact that I like this floralese, like just that scrolly flower look. I'd say, love that. Love to do that one day. I've got a nest. Just need to make the bird and find a spring and add it to the list one day. Maybe that's... I'm not sure what else caught my eye in there. Might have been because I was making the flowers for um, Susanna. Mm. They caught my eye too, the butterfly. Oh, that's just beautiful, beautiful, very good book. Anyway, I um, see how there's this piece added to it, like there's an inserted piece of embroidery there. It's probably more these three that are my inspiration for this project. Probably that book's just got caught up in it. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to put this up here, but I have to take into account that it might affect the flowers. They can creep up onto there a little bit and they can go up there. So to make the decision that I'm going to actually stitch that into that position, because there's nowhere else I'd really like it, I just need to visualize in my head potentially where these flowers might go and can I get enough of them? So if we go high to that top corner, bring them down a bit of a branch up there, a branch creeping up to here and a branch into here, it should work. Yeah, it should work. I put the, the pot or the pocket, we'll call it the pocket for the flowers off of center. So if I put that off of center, I should be able to head to that corner, head towards it and head out here. So I should have plenty of room for the flowers. And I'm using that as my visual aid and I will get heaps. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to pin this and I won't waste time with you guys doing that, but I will stitch this into position. Lots of little stitches, little ones to hold it. Um, hold it down. Might just come back a little bit from that edge. Make sure it's sitting right. It'll, I think it'll make a beautiful feature at the top of my panel. Okay, so that's some homework. We'll do flowers, like I said, another day, but at least you can sort of see where I'm heading with it. I'm slowly building up this mush of <laughs> mush of texture here. Now I did do some um, um, some hexagons uh, when I was down with Susanna, but um, I don't have them at my fingertips, so they may merge in somewhere as part of this building up the background. So anyway, sidetracked just a little. I want to, using some red thread, so it's gonna be red cream with a hint of this green, because I'll need a little bit of green for the stems. And I have my Japanese fabric that I picked up on my trip to um, potentially use as well for those flowers. So what I'm thinking is enhancing bunny. So we'll just give this a little try. I'll do his leg. And if we're happy with that, that's some more homework for me. And I'm going to do just a little running stitch around his body, just to add a little bit more detail to him. like that. It's nearly got a hint of red work. I really like red work when it was very much on trend. I did a lot of red work and I have a red work journal that I still pick up from time to time to do things in. Now 
the other idea I had before I get into the big vase of flowers is I would like some wildflowers around the place, like bunnies in a uh, field of flowers. So I thought I might pick up my pen and sketch in some random, random flowers. I also need to come up with a plan for that patch. Now that patch I inherited in a book of fabrics, uh, sorry, a book of patterns from a lady who was giving up her sewing room to a friend and then the friend gave it to another friend and then that friend gave it to my friend and finally it all ended up with me, what was not required from everyone and I inherited a hip fur which I then passed on to a friend I found via YouTube who is in my hometown and that's gone to a good use. And in one of the books of a quilt that she must have been making was heaps of handwritten notes and this fabric. So the little box of fabrics or the pinned together little stash of fabrics I've got in my scrap basket but with it was this patch she must have tested it before she started a quilt i really need to get a thimble on that finger i can feel my poor little finger starting to get worn in it's healed up nicely because i was doing so much stitching pre-easter that it got quite sore and then having a break over easter really really helped <laughs> give my finger a bit of rest and I don't want to reopen a sore finger and this type of work is pretty heavy on your fingers so we'll get a thimble on now girl before you have a tender spot so the plan in this video is to work a few of these areas with some stitching just to start building up on top of this background layer some interesting elements one being this type of thing just running stitch around things camphor stitch to make it these look like they're patched together pieces so they'll be pretty straightforward i think we can do Something with that piece and then like I said I wouldn't mind some random flowers to be coming up maybe stitched in wool so it's nice and chunky to hold its own on all of this if it means I have to put a pile of patch on in places to push back that so we can see it. I'm happy to do that. But we'll have a little play, I'm thinking. I'm happy with Bunny's leg, back to what I'm actually doing at task here, thinking ahead. I like Bunny's leg. I think that will all be good. Now, where's my pen? I think over here is a definite spot for something. And I think, I think we could do, um, what could we do? Let's just start with some little flowers, maybe some little turned up daisies. Let's, let's assume there's some form of grass along this bottom corner. I might zoom in a little bit so you can see. We'll give it a, give us a bit of a baseline here with some form of pistol stitches, something. And then I think we need like some little, little guys. We need something a bit brave. What can we do? Um, do you 
just trying to picture something in my head. It's great when I've got a design to work from, but I want it very soft, curvy, I think, and a bit abstract. And stay with that daisy theme. Maybe we French knot and do something in here, like maybe we do a chain stitch around that to raise it, like have a play with the stitches and then do something in there to make it feel very textured. So let's bring his stem down. We won't worry about thickness of stems yet. We'll see how it sort of goes. Let's look at a really abstract leaf. Something sort of like a holly leaf. Just to keep it really abstract, I'm thinking. see how that goes whether I make it as distinctively holly or I curve it out a little bit because I put a point on it maybe I curve it out a little bit um, let's put another flower out we want something wonky and weird it's it's whimsical so maybe I bring in another flower head there and do some zigzags it's just something different. If I don't like it, I can iron it out. It's not a big thing. Maybe we do a second circle in there, another circle, and then we can do something textured in there. See what I mean by I want it to be quite whimsical? Let's bring that down to there. Maybe uh, a bigger daisy. So he's like part of this. This guy's leaf needs to be a bit different. dots on the leaf like keep it really interesting this is like a fantasy garden for fantasy rabbit to be scooting along in once I get in stitching it'll it'll develop but just to have a bit of a guideline of where we're heading with it goes a long way. Don't think I want full, oh, I'm not even in the screenshot. I was concentrating guys. I don't think I want full daisies where it has the petals going all the way around. I think I want like this turned down petal leaf this sort of look now we need some really strappy looking leaves uh, flowers as well just to break it up a little bit like some you know just lines dots on the end <laughs> this really is just a just a bit of a guide to start building up a little bit of interest now over to bunny I would like to see 
some embroidery come up onto his body. And I just feel like I'm going to miss seeing it in that. So I'm just glancing over to my scrappy fabric. And I'm wondering if there's something that can be stitched in there. It's one colour. I'm sure I'll find something. Um, actually, I had some leftover fabric from the tea dyeing. Hold that. Okay. And that's, that's the fabric that I picked up for the project, remember? It's um, the Japanese fabric. And I also picked this up. And I'm wondering if there's a pile plain fabric that if I put a patch of it on don't mind that is there like a oh hello look at you so these are perfect colors maybe I'll pull that guy out and where was that little creamy one this one so this is where we start building layers up see that's not a bad match to that it's a little bit bright but i think i think it'll help me hold the phone i'm just going to trim the pink and sheer edge off but actually i don't need to do i because i'm doing needle turn How big do we want this? Let me zoom up a little bit before I get myself out of shot, I think. I think I need a rectangular patch which will just push that red back a bit. Don't mind seeing a little bit of and it could just tuck in there. Okay, and then maybe just past it. I think that's our our mark there all right this is just all in the aid of pushing back the red so that I can do some embroidery and can see it so where's my little pins that's just a case of nestling it in I don't think I want to cover all that but so this little guy will need to be stitched just using my fingers to finger press it just then build up a bit of a garden thing that matches what's going on over the other side over this corner and it'll sort of help tie the story I think across the bottom can't wait to start getting into them and making the flowers out of the pocket but I think just one thing at a time, girl. I'll end up jumping up there and burying myself. Bunny's foot's gonna be slightly covered, but I'm okay with that. 
looks like he's integrated into this little patch. Okay. Happy with that. We've got a lovely little morsel that can just hang around the project because it might be needed. Do we need this guy? I don't think we do. I think we've got enough. What's the chances of getting that back in there? Zero to none. Okay, that's a French general fabric, that one there. Okay, so yeah, the vines, the leaves, um, the roses or the flowers. We won't be using blue, so they're just sort of hanging around. Some of these neutrals don't, don't match it. That one works, that one works, that purple doesn't. So they can stay with the project, but those I think can be packed away. They're surplus to requirements. I'm just, this is the leftover bits from when I did my staining. If, if I was doing anything, I'd cut out a piece of this and just stitch it on. But because I want a needle turn, I don't think it's worth the effort for a tiny space. So what I might look for instead is a piece of lace. What's in my lace bucket? I don't mind that. Creates a little bit of interest. It's looking very square. I think we want to break it up. I don't mind that. It's probably a bit big. Something for the garden to grow out of, maybe. I don't mind that. Creating a bit of a garden edge bottom corner here, like that one there. Bring this guy in. I can. I've got a little label there that was originally on the piece. We can move that if we have to but I might be able to manipulate this little scrappy bit. Yeah, I like this. Let's have a little play. Let's get you guys. So can we make it work? I think so. Yep. I'm just going to trim that up and this little morsel of lace can anchor bunny at the bottom corner of the panel and then from this we bring up some of this over here so it looks like there's a plan <laughs> there's actually a plan of attack let's get rid of all these little bits so this piece, where am I heading with it? Well, it's really just giving me a nice big panel to stitch on. I guess I'm sort of missing the big um, projects we did previous years with the Roxy Girls, where we did down the garden path and also, um, yeah, well, pretty much down the garden path. I really enjoyed doing that French one with all the red tones. 
and picking it up once a week and just doing something on it. I, I just thoroughly enjoyed that. Made a hang of a mess on my piece now. So Mr. Bunny is, I guess, the start of a panel that is just going to be random. Pick it up, do some stitching. So I won't commit to a certain video on a certain day for this guy. He's going to be my fill where I've got a space and I can just pick him up and we focus on somewhere on it and slowly build the panel. Could take six months, could take 12 months, but it's just going to be lovely to have, you know, um, a big project that I can nibble, nibble away at. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I can get that onto there. I'll pin it for now, but I do need to get that little, little piece under there. And I'm glad I did that because it's actually helped see that lace by having that little mustard. Mustard square or rectangle there. So the lace doesn't get lost. Yeah, that's good. I think we got the general gist of that corner. And then once I work out my embroidered flowers, we can just finish on that edge. That will look like it's meant to be. Starting to build the layers up. And then these flowers, made a hang of a mess when I did that on there. These flowers can sneak out from behind all this and um, maybe little circular ones with little abstract stitches. I'm trying not to make it look like a particular flower. I want it to be, you know, random. Um, I don't know, gosh, when you don't have a picture of a flower in your mind, to get something random is not easy. I uh, don't like that. No, forget that. That's not going to happen. We'll see. Um, maybe I should throw a daisy in here. Or two. I'll just draw one there and that'll remind me that that there needs it. Where's my iron? I need it gone. I can't focus. I need to turn the iron on. The old eraser. Let's just plug this one in. I won't be happy unless I have a, a design. All right. Okay. Let's give it a second. I think this will be good. I'm sort of creating this garden at the bottom. And the other thing I could potentially do is we could come up with a vine that goes through it at another time. Something that's weaving through the whole garden. We'll see. Is that turned on? No. Hold that thought. <clears throat> You've got to plug it in, girl. Goodness me. Okay, I'm back. Organised, not. Now we got a light. Now we're cooking. So this little red top stitch, I should be able to weave my needle in under all that to catch his little leg there. There we go. I'll draw that daisy in again. And we might 
good slightly bigger one there okay yep could even have some shooting out here I'm sure it'll evolved evolve once I start laying some threads down you st soon see where you've got you know opportunities to to do some things um, I was just thinking there's a little flower I used to do years ago where it's like just a, a scrolly looking how do we do those did a quilt with all this um, stitching on it. I should see if I can find it. I think it's up at my dad's. And they were like little, they look like roses. They're like a, a scrolly little, like a, a, a fruit bun turned on itself. They look really cool too. So coming up with some smaller little flowers I probably will couch all of these stitches. That way they can be raised. Then I can do a bit of whip stitching over the couch stitches. I think that will work a treat. I need to iron out that leaf in there. And I'll start him out like he is holly. But I want a rounded, more whimsical top to him. That makes sense. Is that such a thing? Yeah, nearly like a, a thistle. I could lay fabric in there. But I think I'm going to keep it stitched because the fabric's going to be at the top with those flowers. Yeah, I think I need to keep it all stitched. Okay, that's the start. Then there'll be just sprigs of grass, random stitching. Yeah, that's good. Happy, happy. Now, what I might do is get a little bit more of this red bunny done. Or do I do that under there? Now I'll get, let's get a bit more of this bunny. Gives me a chance to think too. The other thing I thought of is I could put something in his ear there. You know, like the inside of his ear. That one you can't see, but that one we could have a play. Let's just get his little tummy stitched. Let's just leave that iron on so that it's hot in case I go off on another tangent. I think pieces like that, like I said before, will just be canvas stitch. Yeah. There won't be any ribbon on this. It's got to be more of an organic feel to it than having shiny ribbon, satin ribbon and things like that. That's where I'm thinking along the lines of wool and the pearl cotton. Yep. Is there any other ideas in my head? Not really. I think that's probably it. Alright, I might 
just pretend that we're coming along his arm now. And we'll see if we can sneak down into here. Oh, Susanna, message for you. I pulled out this thimble that I bought at Gales. Susanna really likes it. It's a Japanese one, I think. And you stretch it around your finger and then glue it. And then it should be, you know, that perfect perfect fit I just don't like it I just can't can't work with it thimbles are funny funny things you either like them or you don't back to this guy who is buy 10 for not a lot of money off of Amazon probably 12 months ago and I still have about five left um, it's the best I've found so far I can't handle the metal thimbles I'm not real good around metal at the best of times because it makes my teeth chatter. So the weirdest feeling, you know, those weird feelings we get when certain noises hit us. Metal is definitely that for me. So at the moment, the little silicon thimble is my go-to. I've tried china thimbles, I've tried porcelain thimbles. I guess you just got to keep trying until you find the right one. There's not a lot around my shopping zones to try, you know. I sort of see the same brands. Maybe one day I'll get further afoot and pick up a thimble that's something different, but at the moment. I'm pretty happy with this one. So sorry, Susanna, we tried, but I don't like it. I think I find the end of it just too bulky. There's like that fabric fold there. It's pieces like this that has a few layers that the old thimble really comes into play. Some of the other things I do, it's there's just not the hours of stitching that goes into these big panels. Oh, I must say too, um, I saw on Instagram pop up, Jessie Chorley has released a book and you can pre-order it from her website. You go direct to Jessie. She doesn't have a distributor, which uh, means every coin goes into Jessie's pocket, which is fantastic. So, um, you, but you do need to go to her actual website to order it. And you can actually get a signed copy from her, which is lovely. So, um, don't quote me on the price, but I think I believe it was like 42, is it pound? She's in England, so could have been euro. No, is it the, the sign that looks like a, an L? Is that pound? I don't know. I didn't look. I was just too excited. It was an impulse purchase. Actually, someone sent me a message. Who was it? I think it was Kathy. Someone sent me a message on Instagram and said, Jessie's got a book. And I was like, go fly. <laughs> so I ordered that. I also pre-ordered Tilly Rose's new book. And I think that's June. And I also pre-ordered um, Jennifer's book. Jennifer Clouston's new book coming out. And I think it said June as well. So... For those of you out there that are fans of those three ladies, there are three books coming. I believe some people have the Tilly Rose book already, but I think it's because you guys are in the country where she is, so the rest of us have to just wait a little bit longer. There was another one too that I was had on my hit list. I'll have to check my notes because I can't remember now. I've got a little bit of thread left. So I might just get rid of this little leg. I'm 
until it runs out. Now, who was it? Um, oh, um, no, it wasn't a book. Is it um, a course that Green Door are offering? Now, who was that? Oh, my goodness. I'll just zip it because I don't... It's Cassie. Is it Cassie's course? I'll, I'll zip it because I need to check. I'll, I'll get back to you on that. And the other exciting news, which I'm super chuffed, is when my husband said, what do you want for your birthday? Which is end of May. And I, before I said, oh, nothing, don't worry about it. It's all good. And he goes, yahoo, I don't have to worry about it. It's all good. I was ready. And I said, I would like to, and he's like looking at me to say, here we go. I would like to enrol in the Fleur Woods workshop that is coming to Brisbane. Now, don't quote me on the dates. Go to Fleur's website. It is the middle of May. I think it's like the 14th, 15th, 16th or 13th, 14th, 15th of uh, May. So it is at New Market for the Brisbane girls at a little hall being hosted by someone, but I don't know who, I, whether Fleur has just hired the space because I believe it is available. So I thought, oh, I'm going to go check it out. And I thought while I'm there, I might check it out for myself. Maybe I might use the space in the future for a retreat of my own because I wouldn't mind doing one, catch up with a few folks in um, 2025. So I'll be looking for a great venue and I thought, oh, I didn't even know that place existed. So I said to my husband, I'm going to go check out the venue. I'm going to do Fleur Woods course. Now it's florals. It's embroidering florals. And I can hear you now going, Corinne, didn't you just do the online course of that? Yes, I did. But it was so much fun. And it's right up my alley. Like I just love embroidering and painting and flowers so I said to my hubby I'm going to go and do it again but this time with the beautiful Fleur. It was so hard watching you all that attended the Fleur course with uh, the Rachel and Sarah and Juju and some other YouTubers and I was like oh and I knew the Fleur was in Brisbane and I was like oh no got too much on moving house really don't but the move is rolling along and everything's falling into position and I thought I should consider it and then when I was looking at my phone I realized that a day around those dates I need to be in Brisbane to take um, Gaz's mum to the eye doctor she gets her eyes checked every couple of months and oh gosh they stick a needle in and do all sorts of nasty stuff to help her with her eyesight so I said to Gaz well I'll come to Brisbane I will do your mum's eye appointment pick her up and take her and then while I'm down here I'll um, do Fleur's course so it'll be great and that's what I want for my birthday so he was like beauty I don't have to think too hard for that I'm like no nope. So I jumped online and I booked myself a ticket. So any of you Brisbane girls that didn't know about it and you're interested, head over to Fleur's website. I might put it in the description below, actually. I'll put a link to Jessie's book. I better write all this down as well. So if you're interested in Jessie's and Tilly Rose, her book, and of course, beautiful Jennifer. So I ordered my Jennifer book and Tilly book from Booktopia. I'm sure there was a third book because I remember thinking, oh, I know what the other one was. Oh my goodness, I know what the other one was. was 
of these. She has heaps of books and I've looked at them all and it's just been overwhelming and I've gone, oh, not today because I didn't know which one would interest me. And then I just typed in her name into Booktopia and the first book that popped up caught my eye and I ordered it. That I think will arrive reasonably. Budgie, don't you jump up here. I've got an iron. I think that will arrive reasonably quickly. I don't, don't remember which one, so don't ask. Um, yeah, there was three. And then Jessie Chorley. So I've got four books coming. How exciting. And a Fleur Woods course. Goodness me. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. It is only April, but a girl might as well shop in advance. Hey, Fudgy, don't jump up. Concentrate, Fudgy. Stay on the ground. So, yeah, that's what I've been up to. Naughty girl. No, lucky girl. So, yeah, any Brisbane girls, come and join me. That lot that was at um, Susanna's retreat, the Queensland girls, come and join me. That's if Fleur is what you like stitching, you know, that mightn't be your style, but <clears throat> I think there was four of you. Anita, you'd like Fleur. Christine. Um, Diane, you'd like Fleur. Is there only three? No. Oh, gosh. My memory. I apologise. Yeah, no, my memory's gone. I can see your face, but I just can't pull the name. Anyway, you know who you are, ladies. Don't tell me if you've booked a ticket to the girls that I'm talking to right now. I'll just see if you're there. Don't tell me in advance. Just book it if you're coming and then keep it quiet and it'll be... An extra treat when I get there. See, I'm planning another birthday surprise. I tell you, I tell, when I have a birthday, it has to last the month. That's what my husband always says. Oh, careful, there's a... I'm stitching up onto his buttocks there and we want to finish the leg with a distinct stitch. And then up here. There we go. Now we're off and racing again. So that's all my news, I guess. Some great books on their way. A course for my birthday. I've got a plan for Bunny. Which is great. I'll have to go rummaging through my threads and pull together some different ones and then I'll come back once I've sort of had a play with some of the stitching and show you some of the, the ideas. So that'll be the next video on Bunny is working on the embroidery in the garden. And if I've got spare time, I'll keep camp for stitching and quilting down those big pieces and that this red background, get that all done, get my little mustard piece into position stitch down that lace, stitch down the panel at the top with the cherubs in it. So that's great. Plenty of, plenty of homework. There we go. Got a little bit of thread left. How are we going for time? Oh, look at that. We're cruising. Let's just get this corner done. Okay. Now we're going to turn. Trying hard 
hard not to touch that iron with my wrist. That'd be very disappointing, wouldn't it? You can hear it clicking there. It's dangerous, this stitching. Okay, come on. Don't knot up on me. That's it. We've got enough. We're going to go up. close to the end use every little skerrick you know how it is we've got to use all our bits I've been thinking about how I could work a, a bird into this as well sitting up in amongst the flowers is another idea floating around Okay, I think we're really starting to get a bit miserly on the thread. I might knock that off. And I might leave you guys all in peace. Have a lovely day. And I will catch you all in the next video. I will drop into the description below those links to those books and also Fleur's course. And um, yeah, if you're interested in coming and hanging with me and we stitch, oh, look at Bunny, I love him. Well, um, yeah, I might see you. And if the, any of the retreat girls decide to jump a plane or drive up to it, don't tell me, surprise me. All right, guys, look after yourselves and I will catch you all in the next video. Bye.